Welcome to Daily Dose, supporting your mental health. My name is Susan Dernan, and I am the administration lead of the Mississauga Arts Council. This webinar is part of our TD Culture Lab professional development webinar series presented by Mississauga Arts Council and sponsored by TD Bank Group. The Mississauga Arts Council is dedicated to enabling the growth of the arts by creating opportunity and connection between artists and residents in Mississauga and beyond. Celebrating our milestone 40th anniversary this year, the Mississauga Arts Council is a registered charity dedicated to accelerating progress toward the attainment of our vision of Mississauga as a vibrant cultural community where arts and culture thrive. We would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, Ojibwe Chippewa, Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. It is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Dr. Eva Anchak, a registered child and youth psychologist in private practice at the Core Center. She is the founder and CEO of the Ideal Me Enrichment Foundation that promotes excellence and positive change through education, technology, and art. The foundation created Talk to Alex, an innovative app that provides kids with a robo friend that helps them to feel better and shows them how to take care of themselves. Dr. Eva is a member of Advisory Council at Resilient Kids Canada. She is affiliated with the Ontario Psychological Association Section on Psychology and Education, a member of the Learning Disability Intensive Support Programming Committee as well as the Alternative Curriculum Committee, where she is responsible for the development and implementation of specialized programs for students who have cognitive and behavioral problems. Dr. Eva is an author and co-author of several research papers and has presented at multiple conferences, workshops, and training sessions on subjects such as social intelligence, anxiety, alexithmia, negative attitude changing, narrative mode, child development, cognitive and behavioral disabilities, and mental health. For many years, she has been affiliated with the Predoctoral Psychology Internship Consortium and provides supervision for special practicum and internship students at the Catholic District School Board. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me to this discussion today. Lovely. So why don't we get started? Um, I think, you know, a, a really good place to start is just a nice general overview. Um, you know, what is mental health and how can we, how can we as individuals sort of help ourselves to, to maintain positive mental health? Mental health refers to our overall psychological well-being. It includes the way we feel about ourselves, the quality of our relationships, um, ability to manage feelings and dealing with difficulties. Um, it is important to understand that anyone can experience mental health problems. And actually statistics show that one in five Canadians struggle with mental health. However, recently these numbers became much bigger due to the recent pandemic. And people are experiencing a range of strong emotions and we may feel overwhelmed sad, disappointed, anxious, or afraid. We may be anxious and fearful over which routines to resume and be feeling frustration and disappointment over the seemingly endless cycles of the pandemic. Some people may be feeling hopeless uh, that the pandemic will ever end. And these feelings are understandable. It is normal to feel like that now. Uh, I just wanted to share some tips on how we can take care of our mental health and our mental well-being and to build resilience. Um, well, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of staying active. It is not only good for our body, but it's also good for our brain. When we exercise, when we are active, our body releases some hormones such as serotonin or endorphins um, that can relieve stress, improve memory, and even help with sleep. Um, 
at this point, I would like to mention how important it is to practice good sleep hygiene. Uh, for instance, we need to get the right amount of sleep, uh, let's say seven to 10 hours per day, go to bed and get up at the same time each day. Uh, staying hydrated, um, eat enough healthy foods each day uh, because our nutrition can really affect our mood. And I think it is important also to mention that we need to be mindful of changes in the, in the substance use, especially during the pandemic, this, uh, the consumption significantly increased and relying on substances can interfere with successfully coping with stress. Um, there are also different ways that can help uh, to reduce overall level of stress and improve mental well-being. Well, some of them include yoga, mindfulness, and even deep breathing. Uh, some people enjoy practicing guided meditation or visualization because these things make us feel more relaxed and more present in the moment. Um, sometimes even listening to an uplifting song can make us feel a little bit more calm or squeezing a stress ball can help uh, to feel a little bit more centered. Um, taking a walk in the nature and enjoying the sights and sounds of trees um, can be also uh, very relaxing and uh, very helpful and everyone really responds to sensory input in a little bit different way. So I think it is worth to experiment and find what works for, for us the best. Uh, well, of course, uh, social interactions and being able to talk to somebody, talk to a friendly face is important, even with interactions uh, that uh, in-person interactions that are a little bit carp nowadays uh, due to the pandemic. I think, you know, it's worth to um, just talk to someone over phone or have some kind of virtual or even interaction um, just to hear a voice of another person and be able to share your thoughts, your, your feelings with somebody else. And um, another thing that I think is really important, if we are really struggling, so feeling distressed to the point that we are not able to function, it is important to seek help. Too much, for instance, or too little sleep, losing or gaining significant amount of weight or inability to take care of responsibilities, um, well, also in thoughts or hurting yourself are all signs that we should reach out to others and perhaps seek professional help. I understand stigma around substance use and mental health problems can be a barrier to addressing these issues and getting help. But if you can face these challenges head on and get help early, you will be better off in the long run. Thank you so much. That was such a nice overview of sort of how we can, uh, you know, things to keep in mind, eating well to keep your 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 brain going, and and you know, it's it's easy to overlook just the very simple things that make such a difference. Um, and certainly, the stigma around mental health has absolutely changed, and has completely changed during the pandemic, as so many more people are struggling with mental health issues or you know, depression and stress and anxiety and things that they maybe haven't felt before or identified before. And I think conversations really are changing in a really positive way. So it's it's nice to hear that. Um, you know, for artists, um, it's particularly been a difficult time during the pandemic. And I'm wondering if, uh, you know, maybe you have some advice um, for, for artists who don't have, you know, a nice steady nine to five job. Um, you know, during the pandemic, working from home, it's been difficult to maintain work-life balance. And when your job is kind of, you know, a, a, you know, a gig job or in irregular hours, how can somebody help sort of, you know, maintain that work-life balance that we're all striving for? So the work-life balance is tricky under the best of circumstances, but balancing work as an and life as an artist can be even more challenging uh, than for those with a nine to five conventional job, as you mentioned. Uh, so whether you are a writer or an actor or a painter or any other kind of artist, it is easy to become overwhelmed with building, a, following, perfecting a craft and maintaining romantic and personal relationship. Um, 
here I, I, I was thinking about some tips that can uh, help uh, make things a little bit better. Um, I think it is very important to follow some kind of schedule and I am a big fan of putting uh, things in a visual way. So for instance, having this schedule in front of, uh, of us, um, I don't know, somewhere in the kitchen on a, uh, on a desk, it helps not only to structure our time better, but also track daily activities. Um, and also, well, to be, to, we, we, it, it forces us to be more disciplined and productive and also feel a little bit more accomplished too, because we can visually track, uh, you know, what, what is happening in our, uh, in our life. This is also helping to decrease mental energy needed to memorize what needs to be done. So at the same time, developing some kind of morning or evening routines uh, can be helpful uh, to, again, save some mental energy and reduce anxiety uh, around not having enough time to complete your work or spend time with your family or just to, to relax. Uh, well, another thing I, uh, I believe is important to keep in mind is to have some kind of hobby. Uh, I noted that the artists have to perform their craft at the highest level. They always strive for perfection in, in their professional life. And uh, hobbies are things we do um, that we love, but without really the anxieties of being perfect. Um, again, it can be something that we do outside, like biking, walking, hiking, you know, Getting outside is more, more than just uh, change the scenery from your office studio or, or, or workplace. But, you know, most people know that, that uh, being outside can, uh, the, and the assumption provides vitamin D that is uh, vital for and, and can help with mental health. Um, another thing uh, I believe artists may need to uh, remember about is to stand up for your artistic self and value your artistic time. Of course, as an artist, you love what you're doing and this is your passion. And it is important to communicate to people that this is also a profession. Uh, so they, other people can view it in exactly the same way. So no one can devaluate, uh, devalue your work without your permission. And this is important to understand that customers are not buying your work. They are buying the thousands of hours that led up to the product that they want to buy. And that's the value. And if you don't see it that way, no one else will. I think another uh, aspect uh, of being able to balance the life uh, your, your private life and work is to have somebody outside of the house not your spouse not uh, not your significant other but somebody uh, in your life that life that fully understands the challenges of artists life somebody uh, who works in the same industry industry faces the same ups and downs and, uh, and it is important, you know, and sometimes to vent our challenges, but also uh, celebrate uh, each other's successes. That was fantastic. And it's, it's so important to have people in your life who understand what you do and why you do it. You know, back, I'm, you know, a classical musician. And back when we were in school, you're surrounded by people who are in the same position as you are. They're working as hard as you. They understand the artistic, you know, values and what's driving you and, um, and you don't always get that outside of, you know, your, your school. So it's, it's good to, to maintain that. And, um, and it actually kind of leads into my next question, which is, um, you know, it's, it, because you put so much of yourself into your art, it's really easy to sort of, um, to, to, when you receive that artistic criticism, which you're bound to get, um, to, to really take it personally and have it affect you because you put your heart and soul into your artwork and then somebody thinks it's bad or has criticism about it and therefore, you know, you take it on yourself. And do you have any advice on how artists can kind of maintain a, a healthy separation of their self-worth and their artistic criticism? Well, I noted that most talented and intelligent artists don't see their positive qualities and achievement from an objective perspective. Uh, they notice their weaknesses and fail to attain their objectives. 
So in my opinion, many artists could use a lesson on how to improve self-esteem. And psychologists just refer to the term self-esteem when describing a person's overall sense of self-worth or personal value. Low self-esteem can self-esteem can play a significant role in restricting one's desire, motivation, and moving forward through the art career. Um, it's natural for um, level of self-esteem to fluctuate and everyone uh, has low periods, but a chronic case of low self-esteem can be very harmful. Uh, self-esteem improves when we make the commitment to replace negative self-talk and attitudes with positive attitudes and actions. A healthy amount of self-esteem will serve as protective shield against fear, self-sabotage, victimization and failure. When we have strong confidence and self-worth, nobody can take it away from, from us, regardless what they say or what they think. Um, well, it takes time to practice, uh, to establish this confidence uh, in your own abilities, especially as you're saying, when, uh, when sometimes artists are um, um, being criticized or uh, the work is not being uh, bought by others. Um, and I think it's important to make a list of best qualities you have, unique talents and, and skills to, together with your accomplishment. This is a good exercise um, that will help with this process. And it's also important to continue updating this list on a regular basis. I, I grew up in the family, not of artists, but people who work with artists. All my family works for public media in Poland. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I grew up around uh, actors, singers, poets, and um, uh, painters. It was the best experience ever. They shaped me. And I think I understand a little bit better what people are doing, uh, dealing with. And it was heartbreaking to see somebody, you know, uh, who is a Nobel Prize nominee for the book they, they wrote and they question themselves, right? <laughs> they <laughs> say, oh my God, I could be better. Uh, so, so I really understand what, what what people are dealing with, people are very sensitive. People who create, who put their their souls out there, are very sensitive, and it's very difficult for them sometimes to reach out and ask for help because this is about the, what what is the difference between my creation, my sensitivity, or mental problems? <laughs> is there already something wrong with me, or or I'm just doing fine? I'm just creative. And something I always believe and try to tell people uh, when the topic comes up is a professional artist need to be able to disconnect from work emotionally. At the end of the day, it's, it's just a profession. It's not to say you shouldn't create with heart, passion, uh, but after a piece is done or even after you have an idea, it's time to disconnect. Um, it's important not to be caught in this quality check of your pre previous work and worry too much, you know, about likes and the numbers, uh, you know, on, on the social media. So um, this, these are some of the ideas I would like to share uh, with um, uh, regards to uh, being able to differentiate within, uh, between your self-worth and which your own creation your own creation does not define you and as an artist in any profession we grow each and every time we produce something new because i understand that we are talking to artists uh, who are professionals right yeah. if you if you are a professional like me you know i i also have to go home and forget about issues I'm discussing with people, otherwise I would get crazy. <laughs> How can I help anyone, right? How can you create if you are focusing on, on your previous creation and criticize yourself? How can you grow? Yeah, absolutely. And especially for you. I mean, as you said, as a professional, you're hearing people's troubles and issues all day. And if you take that to heart, <laughs> how do you cope with your own life, right? It's a, a healthy amount of distance from from your daily work and and your personal life is, is so important to have for anyone. And I, I, I believe that this is the difference between profession and hobby. If you're a professional artist, if you're a professional psychologist or 
professional physician, uh, again, of course, you want to help from the bottom of your heart. Of course, you want to create from the bottom of your heart. But at the end of the day, you need to understand that your mental well-being is uh, super important if you want to continue doing what you're doing and grow each and every day. But I think as, you know, we've had two years sort of off, you know, creating by ourselves without sharing uh, you know, live performances haven't been happening and they're going to hopefully start coming back soon. So I think for a lot of artists, there's, you know, new challenges or old challenges that have become new challenges. Any any suggestions to, to help artists sort of manage those waters? As, as you're saying, um, it's very difficult to predict unpredictable. And um, yes, you're right. Uh, we are, well, we're hoping that... Um, this situation would end a long time ago. And of course, after a long time of masks, working at home and uh, limited social interactions, it is to be expected that getting back into so uh, society will be doubting for many people. I think it is super important to, um, to keep in mind uh, that um, th when, uh, that things will be different. At uh, the same th time, um, social skills are just what they are. They are skills. We learn them, we practice them, and we adapt them over time. Uh, so without our typical pre-pandemic daily interactions, uh, we are simply out of practice with our social skills. That's why some artists may again go through a stage fright or um, being present at some events. And as you mentioned before, also, um, they may be afraid about uh, catching the virus itself. Um, with that, uh, obviously, there are some recommendations, uh, some continuation of using masks or, or uh, keeping this um, distance from each other possibly will be present in our lives uh, for a little bit longer. Um, all of this is uh, the time, uh, the transition time we need to adapt to the new normal. Of course, this may leave us feeling awkward and uncomfortable. Fortunately, we will practice social skills again as we return to a more normal work and social life. Um, and again, we need to realize that things are not going to be exactly as they were before. It may take time to get used to being around people again. Uh, people will need to find their own comfort level, their patience, uh, compromise for others. And if you have a choice, I would suggest to start gradually. For example, uh, if you have trepidation about being around groups of people, um, take breaks. Eventually, as you have more of these new experiences, they will get easier. It's like, you know, um, learning to ride a bike again. So it's uh, familiar, but you still may fall once in a while. So in other words, just we need to be patient and um, basically going through the same thing we went before. This time, it will just be a little bit easier. And that's such an interesting point. I remember early in the pandemic, learning to distance myself from people. You go to the grocery store and you can't pass someone in the aisle because you need to stay apart from them. And we weren't used to that. Humans are used to close interaction. And so it's it's interesting. We had to learn how to be apart. And now we're at a point where we get to learn how to be together again. And as you said, you know, take it slow is, is sort of the you know, fantastic advice. And I think be be understanding with yourself and others, right? Like people have different comfort levels. And I think we're a lot more comfortable with, you know, I believe in, you know, I believe in this, this is what I'm comfortable with. And other people might be comfortable with different things. So I think that's good advice. Take it slow and be nice to yourself. <laughs> For someone who maybe doesn't have a therapist or a psychologist, or they haven't thought about it or looked into it, or, you know, it's something new, or they're sort of at a point in their life where they're interested, you know, what can a therapist or a psychologist offer um, someone? And how might someone go about sort of finding a therapist or, um, you know, not sure, and they want to try it out and see if it's right for them? Any any advice that way that you might be able to give someone? Um, thank you so much for, for, for this question. Um, 
Well, as I mentioned before, it is really important to seek help when we feel that uh, things are becoming out of control. Um, mental health problems are as serious as uh, physical problems. And if we do not address it promptly, it is going to take much longer and the process is going to be much more unpleasant. Um, Psycho there, there is a difference between psychologists, psychiatrists, and psycho psychotherapists. I, I can briefly explain this um, difference. First of all, psychiatrist is a medical doctor who prescribes medication. It's a medical doctor who deals with normal and um, abnormal, uh, like with the mental health illness. Psychologist is a scientist who works with normal and abnormal behaviors. We do not prescribe medications, we talk with people. And just like psychotherapists, uh, we can provide people with some tools and strategies how to improve mental well being, how to become more resilient. I actually, about five or six years ago, I remember uh, having an interview and I was saying that we are approaching the pandemic of mental health. And, and we were not even thinking about uh, about pandemic, about COVID. The reason I was thinking about it was uh, due to my observations um, in some schools that more and more children were less and less resilient. And the problems that we were experiencing at school mainly stand out from their inability to deal with emotions and uh, with um, how to express the, their thoughts, their, their, their feelings with others. And uh, here we are, there is a pandemic and what we observe, uh, these people who were resilient before are even more resilient, more creative. They are not afraid to reach out to new, uh, uh, new experiences, uh, to try new things. And those people who were not resilient at that time became even weaker at the moment. And um, the statistics are emerging. There are more and more people ending up in the hospitals because of depression, because of severe anxieties and so forth. Um, so uh, in other words, um, as I said, it's important to reach out for help. Um, it's relatively easy nowadays uh, to find somebody uh, who will listen to you, but uh, at the same time provide you with some tools and some strategies how to deal with uh, with stresses in your life, uh, how to improve your self image, how to improve your self confidence, uh, how to become more uh, resilient. Um, um, well, here at Core Center, we have a bunch of psychotherapists and few psychologists who can help um, with that. One more uh, difference between psychologists, psychiatrists, and, and psychotherapists. Psychologists and psychiatrists can also diagnose. And uh, I think it is important to uh, meet someone and speak to someone who you feel comfortable with who you think understands you and is able to, you know, um, understand your points, points of view. What are the problems? What are the barriers for, for artists to reach out for help? I know that one of the barriers can be financial, but right now there are a lot of programs that are also um, uh, free of, like, there, there are no fees. Wonderful. Thank you for that answer. And for anyone watching who's interested in getting to know you a little bit more or learning more about Core Center, uh, how can we reach you? Uh, you're more than welcome to visit our website at www.corecenter.ca or corecenter.online. Uh, you can also call our office at 647-515-4357. I also would like to encourage people to try and use Talk to Alex app. Uh, it's a free app. Uh, it was created uh, um, by, by a team of professionals, including mental health workers, uh, app developers, uh, artists uh, of different kinds, including voice artists. And um, uh, this app is supposed to help um, to, to, to actually uh, familiarize yourself with tools that we are using and strategies that you are using during the therapy. So even if you click on the, the big button, the big icon of Alex uh, in the homepage, um, 
it is a really nice intro, a really nice demo um, how the therapy works like. I wouldn't say that this is a tool that will cure anybody. I, I would rather say it is a nice tool that can help us to better understand what therapy looks like and what tools and strategies uh, you can use. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that, but there is no fee for the app at the moment and uh, no information are collected. Uh, so everything is uh, confidential and stays basically on your phone or any device that you're using. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. I'm excited to, to, to learn more about your Talk to Alex app and try it out. And I think, you know, for a lot of people who haven't, you know, been a part of or haven't experienced, you know, any any sort of formal therapy. It's sort of a fun, get your toe wet, you know, your free trial, if you will, before you, you dive in. So it's a, a fun way to get to know it a bit more. Thank you so much, Dr. Anchak. This has been a great conversation and you've provided very valuable information for, for viewers. Um, and for our viewers, if you're interested in learning more about Mississauga Arts Council's TD Culture Lab webinars, or if you're interested in watching previous presentations, you can learn more at mississaugaartscouncil.com and click on TD Culture Lab under the programs menu. Thanks so much for watching.